In this video, I'm going to show you how to prep for weight loss if you're a beginner. You probably heard that the best way to lose weight is to meal prep. Here's the thing. When you prep your food weekly, you can easily keep tabs on what you're consuming daily. You can also control your portion sizes and you can make sure your calories are coming from nutrient dense foods. With that said, I know prepping enough meals to last a week can seem daunting. However, there's a simple way to do it, especially if you're a beginner. Hey man, Gary Walker here with liveanabolic.com and welcome back for another video. If you want to know how to start meal prepping the simple way, then you're in luck, man. In this video, I'm going to show you how to prep for weight loss if you're a beginner. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you need to do is understand that when you're starting out and you want to start losing weight, then the first thing you need to do is just clean up your eating habits. If you're currently overweight and you want to speed up your weight loss efforts, then you can get the ball rolling simply by replacing your bad food choices with better food choices, meaning eliminate fast foods, processed foods, fried food, and unhealthy snacks. Replace those with nutrient dense whole foods like lean protein, veggies, healthy complex carbs, and essential fats. Now, if you've been dieting for a while and you're currently plateaued, then this video might be too simple for you. And you might want to check out some of our other videos on nutrition. Again, this is how to meal prep for beginners. The difference is this. In the beginning, I don't recommend you count calories at all. I know what you're thinking. Wow, how can I tell you not to count calories when you need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight? Well, here's the thing. I've been coaching for over 25 years and I can speak from a lot of experience here. If you're overweight or obese, then you're eating a lot more calories than you realize. The food you're currently eating is what has gotten you to this current weight. Initially, to get a jump start on your fat loss, all you need to do is use some portion control, which I'll show you later in this video, and then just start creating better eating habits. Also, this is where meal prepping is crucial to your success. When you first start cleaning up your eating habits, your body is going to go into shock and then you're going to start craving all sorts of bad food. If you have meals prepared to eat every time you get hungry, then you can prevent giving into that temptation and this will keep you moving in the right direction. All right, the last thing I'm going to mention before I start breaking down my personal meal prepping is this. If you're not a beginner and you are struggling to lose weight, you can still use the simplified strategy I'm going to show in this video, but there's one additional step you need to take to create a natural calorie deficit without having to weigh any of your food. If you're interested, then stick around to the end of the video and I'll share what I personally use to help me get extremely lean and what I've used with a ton of my clients over the years as well. Without further ado, let's get to meal prepping. The first thing I do is get out all my protein sources. The key is to find what you like to eat and then prep the meals that you like. For my protein, I like chicken breast, chicken thighs, grass-fed beef, pork chops, eggs, and salmon. Now again, this isn't an exclusive list, but it gives me a ton of options for the week. I also like to have some convenient protein options available like canned tuna and hard-boiled eggs. There are also several ways you can prepare your protein, which I'll get to in a minute. All right, now that I have my protein sources out, I'll then start getting out my cooking appliances. Here's the thing, man. I've been prepping food for a lot of years, so I've acquired a lot of cooking appliances to help me speed up my prep. You don't need to have these to meal prep though, but if you wanna make this weight loss goal a permanent lifestyle change, then I would recommend adding some of these to your kitchen down the road. All right, 
These are some of the appliances I actually like to use. I've got an instant pot, crock pot, rice cooker, air fryer, electric skillet, and a grill. Once I get the appliances out and set up, I get the oven set to the desired temperature and I turn the grill on to start getting it hot. Now it's starting to look like a meal prepping kitchen. Next, get out your carbohydrate sources. Again, choose carbs you like to eat and then cook them the way you like to eat them. For me, I get my jasmine rice, my potatoes, which I make three different ways. Then I like protein pasta, oatmeal, black beans, and I also make sure I keep some one minute rice cups around for convenience carbs. You can also cut up some fruit if you want or some quinoa, veggies, and other healthy carbs. For the potatoes, you can choose any type you prefer. You can cook sweet potatoes, white, yellow, or red potatoes. Add as much variety as you want to this prep. I use my potatoes and I make baked potatoes, fried potatoes, which are phenomenal by the way, and stewed potatoes. Quickly, this is how I make my amazing fried potatoes. I dice them up, place them in the microwave to soften them up. So I usually put them in there for about four, four minutes or so. And then I throw them into a hot skillet with two tablespoons of grass fed butter. I crisp them up slightly and they taste amazing. And they make it a great side that you can add to any of your protein options as well. All right, moving on, once I have everything out, I start to organize my meals. I like to make a lean beef stew and grass-fed chili to add some variety to my weekly meal options. So I like to put all the ingredients together so I can get those ready to cook. For my stew, I use lean meat, carrots, potatoes, onions, and some tomato paste. Then I like to throw all the ingredients into my Instant Pot because it cooks it a lot faster that way. You can also use a large pot on the stove. So again, don't let a lack of appliances keep you from prepping, man. Now that my stew is cooking, I then mix all my beef chili ingredients. I use grass-fed beef, tomatoes, onions, chili powder, and chili paste. I put this all in a pot and cook it on low while the rest of my food is being cooked. I then place all my protein sources on baking pans and I start to season everything with different spices. Try to use calorie free spices here so you don't add any unnecessary calories. The key with this is to change it up to make different flavors so you don't get bored of eating the same flavored food all the time. I like to use spicy, salty, garlicky, smoky and sweet seasonings to add a variety of flavors. I then, I start my baked potatoes by getting them wet first, then sprinkling some salt on them before wrapping them up in foil, and then I stick them in the oven. I also put my salmon in the crock pot with lemon pepper seasoning and sliced lemons on top. I usually change up the way I cook my meat from time to time as well. Sometimes I'll grill it, other times I may bake it or broil it or put it in the Instant Pot. So, to reiterate what I said earlier, the goal is to find healthy food you like and then cook it the way you like it. Doing this will make it easier to eat the meals you've prepared consistently. Also, give yourself several options you can choose from so you don't get bored of eating the same meals every day. Another thing I wanna recommend is keep some protein snacks around for those times you're craving something other than your meals that you've prepared. I like to keep Quest bars, Quest chips, Magic Spoon Cereal, and Air Popped Popcorn. All right, now that your food is cooked, now it's time to prep the meals. You can do these one of two ways. You can separate by meals or separate by macros. For instance, you can put different protein options in individual containers and then put carb options in their own containers. This allows you to put different meals together based on what you want to eat each day or you can also put a protein and a carb into one container to make an actual meal it's completely up to you how you want to do it now for the portion control to keep you from overeating i like to use the one cup containers for most of my carbs this allows me to eat a proper serving of carbs with each meal 
A lot of people tend to overeat carbs, man, and this can lead to excess calories. But when you use these containers, you can monitor your carb intake easier. I typically use the cups for rice, potatoes, beans, quinoa, and fruit. With protein, you can choose the two palms method. Most men need about six palm-sized portions of protein per day. This can be three meals with two palm-sized servings and a cup of carbs with some veggies. So veggies, yes. I didn't prep any veggies for my meals. Unfortunately, I'm not a big veggie eater, man. However, I do recommend you eat a side of vegetables with each of your meals if you can. So if you're one of the lucky guys who like veggies, then feel free to load up, man, because they're loaded with fiber and a ton of micronutrients. Okay, a couple more things before I close out this video. First, you might not have noticed, but my chili made two meals and I also got four meals out of my lean beef stew. And these were easy to make and they give me some great options for quick protein during the week. All right, I promised you I would share a tip that would guarantee you're eating in a caloric deficit even if you're not a beginner and you aren't wanting to count calories. You can do this by using my simplified carb cycling strategy. Basically, all you need to do is eliminate complex carbs on the days you don't work out. You still prepare your meals the same way, but the difference is on the days you're off from your resistance training or weight training, you only eat meals consisting of protein, some healthy fat, and veggies. If you train four days per week, like I recommend, then this gives you three days every week that you're restricting carbs, which significantly reduces calories for the week. All right, so that's the easiest way to consistently burn fat without having to count calories. And lastly, this method is amazing for starting your fat loss journey and great for long-term maintenance, and it's super sustainable. However, if you've been dieting long-term and you're completely stuck in a plateau, then that's when you need to buckle down, man, and start counting every single calorie you put into your body. This can be tedious and frustrating, but it's also vital to helping you break through your plateau and get you back on the fat burning track again. So if that's where you're at, then please check out some of our other nutrition videos on our channel and learn more about eating strategies to get you to your goal weight so you can start implementing the simplified strategy I shared with you in this video for your long-term maintenance. And with that said, man, feel free to ask any questions in the comment section. And that's all that I got, man. Get busy, get after it, and God bless.